Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the thermal fuse on your dryer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to pull the dryer far enough forward that we can access the back. You may possibly need to remove the vent from the back of the dryer to do so. As well, we'll need to make sure that we disconnect the power. So either unplug the dryer or locate your electrical panel and turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuses. Once we've done that, we can start the repair. Now, once we've disconnected the power, our next step will be to remove the main top to give us access to these components. To do so, you'll need to remove two screws located on the back edge of that top panel, and we'll get that out of the way. Now, these are typically Phillips head screw. We'll just remove both of them, and then pull straight back on that top about an inch, and that will release the tabs that are on the bottom edge of that panel, and they fit under two little shoulder bolts on the top of the cabinet. Once we've removed the top, we'll set it aside. Now our next step is to remove the control panel. To do so, we need to take four screws out that secure that to this support piece. Again, there are number two Phillips screws. Now with the screws removed, we're next gonna lift up on the back edge of that control panel and just tilt it forward. There are some plastic tabs across the bottom that we need to gently pull out of some openings. And once we've tilted that far enough forward, you can slide that out and you'll see the tabs across the bottom. Now next we'll need to disconnect the wire harnesses. So simply depress the locking tabs and separate the two halves of the connector, pull them apart, and then we're gonna set that control panel aside. Now our next step will be to remove the front panel from the dryer. There are some screws across the top of the front panel that will need to come out as well as two screws located down near the lint filter on the front. Now it's better to take these two screws out first. Again, number two Phillips head screws. And these screws have a protective washer installed on them so that they don't damage the finish. Now next we'll remove the screws across the top. And be sure to support that front panel as you remove the last screw. And we'll just allow that to tilt slightly forward and then we'll need to disconnect harness connection to the door switch. Simply grasp the back side of that connector, pull it out of the socket. You can then lower that front panel and lift it off to the support tabs on the bottom of the cabinet. And then we'll set that aside. Now at the front panel with that thermal fuse, which is located on the front of the blower housing on this particular model. On some models, that component may be located on the back of the blower housing. If your model has it mounted on the back of the blower housing, you'll need to remove the front bulkhead and the dryer drum to gain access to it. So we'll show you that procedure in case your model has the thermal fuse located on the back of the blower housing. We would next pull the wire harness connector off of the old thermal fuse. Then we'll remove the two screws that secure it to the blower housing. Remove the old thermal fuse. Place the new one into the opening on the blower housing. And then you'll need to install at least one of the screws to hold it in place. Tighten both screws, and then we'll reinstall the wire harness connector. So we'll begin by disconnecting the 
wire harness at the bottom that attaches to the dryer sensor. Simply depress the locking tab. And separate that harness. Next, we're going to remove this support piece across the top. There are number two Phillips screws on both the top and the front that secure that to the cabinet. Now there's also a single screw on the left-hand side here that attaches the housing for the control board to that support piece. So we're going to remove that screw as well. And then we'll just pry that support panel away from the cabinet. Now on the back side of it, there are restraints for the wire harness that we need to disconnect as well. So we'll just untwist that restraint and that will allow that harness to pull away from the panel and then we'll set that aside. Now next we'll disconnect the harness from the light bulb socket and as well we'll pull that harness through the wire harness from the individual restraints. and then just tuck that out of the way. Now we're ready to remove the front bulkhead. We'll begin by removing a single screw that attaches the lint filter housing cover to the blower housing. Then we'll remove the four screws on the mounting tabs for that bulkhead. Now we're ready to lift the bulkhead away from the dryer drum. So we'll need to lift up on both sides because there are some keyhole slots behind these tabs. You can see the keyhole slots and the actual tabs or hooks on the end of these side tabs that fit into those. So we're just gonna set that bulkhead aside. Now our next step will be to remove the drum from the dryer. And to do so, we first of all need to release the tension of the belt from both the motor pulley and the idler pulleys. Now when removing the belt, we're gonna reach in from the right hand side, reach in from the left, locate the belt and the idler pulley. And we're gonna push that idler pulley as far to the left as you can. Roll the belt off of the idler pulley and the motor pulley. And carefully lower that idler pulley to the base of the dryer. And then we can lift the drum out. You should have at least this much slack in that belt. Then we'll use that to lift the drum away from the rear drum rollers. And we're just gonna set that aside. So if your model had that thermal fuse mounted on the back of the blower housing, you'd have access to it right here. Now when reinstalling the drum, we're going to use the belt as a support. We'll fit the drum through the opening in the front of the cabinet. Slide it all the way to the rear. And then we need to make sure that we sit the drum on top of those rear drum rollers and that the felt fits flush up against that rear bulkhead. And just position that belt in the middle of the drum. Just check the marks where the belt rides on that drum. Now with the drum in position, we next need to reattach that belt. You have to do this without being able to see it. We're gonna reach in on the left-hand side and then through on the right across center until we can get hold of that belt, wrap it around the idler pulley and then around the motor pulley. If you have difficulty with that, most of these dryers do have an access panel around the outlet duct. If you remove that carefully without disturbing the duct work, you can visually see in there how that belt wraps around the um, motor and idler to ensure that you have it done properly. So reach in from both sides, find the belt, make sure that we have the groove side of the belt facing the drum. Feel around until you locate the idler pulley. 
Then we're gonna pull that belt across the top of the idler pulley from the left side. Underneath it from the right side, we form a bit of a loop. And then we'll push against the tension of that spring. Until we can wrap that belt around the motor pulley. That will fit the groove side of the belt into the motor pulley. Make sure it's still wrapped around the idler. And then we'll just rotate that drum and we should see the lower fan turning. Just give it a couple turns. Make sure the belt centers itself on the drum. So next we'll reinstall that bulkhead. All we need to do is to fit these hooks into the keyhole slots on the front edge of that cabinet. And we also wanna make sure that we set the drum up on top of those drum rollers. So tuck that in first, lift the drum and the bulkhead at the same time. And all the Four screw holes should line up. We'll install those next. And remember the single screw for that vent cover. Now we're ready to put the support piece in across the top. We'll begin by fitting the short end of that harness through that rectangular opening. We'll reattach the harness to that restraint. Next, we're just going to lay that over. And we'll take our wire harness and feed it through the restraints. Attach the connector to the light bulb socket. Then you can attach that harness to the last restraint. We're then ready to position that support piece, line up the tabs by those slots with the corresponding slots in the cabinet. And keep in mind, we wanna keep that tab for the heater housing on top. And then we'll secure that support bracket. Now, before we put the front panel on, we need to reconnect the harness for the dryer sensor. Make sure the locking tab engages. And now we're ready for the front panel. Now, when installing that front panel, we wanna make sure that the three slotted openings in the bottom of that panel fit over top of the corresponding hooks on the base of the dryer. Make sure they sit flush. We'll tilt the panel up far enough that we can reconnect the harness to the door switch. Make sure it's firmly pressed into that socket. Then we'll push the panel up against the support bracket and secure it with at least one screw. Now we'll put the remainder of those screws in place. Tighten those securely. Remember to put the two screws through into that bulkhead. These are the screws with the built-in washer. Now we're ready to put the console back on. Now when we reinstall that console, we want to make sure that these tabs across the bottom, some models will have four, others will have six tabs, but we need to line those up with the corresponding openings in that front panel. Make sure they fit into place. Then we'll reconnect the wire harness 
Make sure the locking tabs engage. Then carefully tilt that console. It should lay flush across that support bracket. And then we'll secure it with the four retaining screws. So now we're ready to put the main top on. We just need to make sure that these tabs are flat. You just need to make sure that those tabs engage both shoulder screws, one on either side, just behind the console. So just make sure that we have the front of that panel pushed down as we push it forward. And then we can secure it at the back with the two screws. And now we're ready to push the dryer back into position. Now with the dryer back in position, we can reconnect the vent if you disconnected it, reconnect the power, and your repair is complete.